My mom is a very unique woman that I think from coming from the Navajo Nation, um, there are a lot of people that are educated and have lived that balance uh, of life where they go from being traditional and trying to live a modern way of life. And I think what really sets my mother apart is uh, for her, I've never met another woman who was able to bring those two worlds together. My name is Stella Marie Todlina. My clans are Nashkaltene, Mescalero Apache, Tohetlini, Maideshkijni, and Ashi. We have three children Brent, our oldest child, and then Leanne is our second child, and then Tara. So we have a son and two daughters. From a young age, Della was passionate about obtaining an education. I went to boarding school at age five. As it turned out, mom had never registered me. She just thought, it's time for you to go to school, let's go, you know. She didn't know that you had to register your students. And so when we got in line and got up to where the, the people were that were taking care of that, we learned that I was not registered and so I could not attend school that year. And, um, <clears throat> and I began crying, I remember my mother said, let's go home, you can't go to school this year. No, no, I want to go to school, you know, I don't want to go home. And so uh, we started to leave and at the end of the day, uh, turned out one of the girls did not show I was able to go into her place. And so I started school. And they were also saying, besides you're not six yet, you're just five, you know. I think registration was like early September or check-in was early September. And I, was, I wasn't going to be six until October. And then uh, I, stay, I, was, I went here at the Chindley boarding school several years, I don't really remember. And then they decided, well, we need to take a bunch of you to a place called Snowflake where you need to continue your education. You're getting too big now and can't stay here. So I left with a man. We went to Snowflake where I stayed several more years. And then uh, this man I used to babysit for here in Chinle said, you need to go to Ganado Mission uh, School. I think you can do better than these uh, BIA schools and so forth. And so he enrolled me, paid my little tuition and enrolled me at Ganado Mission High School. Our senior year, we were given a test. The senior class was given a test. I just remember doing stuff with my fingers. That kind of test is what I remember. And uh, it turned out I didn't pass the test. I missed it by one point. And oh, everybody was so excited about going to college in the fall, you know, saying, you be my roommate, let's room together and so forth. And there I stood, you know, oh gosh, I can't go to school. And uh, I remember the principal taking me to the scholarship office in Winder Rock and trying to, you know, oh, tell them on my behalf that she's been on the roll, on the roll all this time. You know, what happened? Let her go. One man sat and told, you know, in her, his chair like this. Well, she can't do it in high school. How do you expect her to do it in college? He said, no, she's not going to college. We're not giving her a scholarship. Through many trials over a number of years, 
Della remained committed to higher education and eventually became a professor of English at Diné College. After uh, I couldn't go to college, I came back to live with my mother over in Black Rock. And then this man approached me about a program in Dallas, Texas, and signed me up to go. Paperwork was all ready. I had to leave the following Monday or Tuesday, something like that. And my mother said, I'm not going to send you away like that. I'm going to do a blessing way ceremony for you to send you off with. It began to snow sometime in the night. And with the last song, my stepdad, my father, went out to saddle the horse and then came back in. And mom sat there making the, something to eat for us and for the medicine man too. And he stopped singing and the ceremony was over. And we ate what my mother made and she sent me out into the world, so to speak. It had snowed, the ground was covered with snow I got on top of the horse. My father led it with me. It's the hardest thing to do, or it was the hardest thing for me to do, to leave my mother's home. You know, she gave me her blessing. And I really never went back to that home after that, even after I finished my training and came back. Maybe I would go for a day or two, but never really went back there to live. I called that same man. He said, yep, there are jobs opening here, where, where, here in Chingli, where you live, he said. So I came back and went to work for the IHS uh, health center. It was just a little health center at the time. Worked 10 years there. By that time, Diné College or Navajo Community College had moved to Tseili, was maybe in their second year or so. I was so happy and intrigued by learning to read and write Navajo. I didn't think that was possible, but that was going on, and here I was sitting at home, and I learned quickly. But then I had always loved reading and writing, and I wanted to do that. Instead of staying with teaching Navajo language, I uh, enrolled at Diné College again, an internship program starting up there. The professors there said, oh, it's so hard teaching Navajo students, trying to teach Navajo students English, you know. It's just the hardest thing. Maybe if we can train, if we can train some Navajo people to do it, it might be better. They share the same experience, you know. And so they recruited me. I went on and I just thoroughly enjoyed that. I would teach with them in the fall. In the spring, I'd go to NAU and, and go to school. That went on for like three years, got a master's degree in English. When the scholarship people said, no, she can't do it, you know. If they hadn't held me back, I always think, if they hadn't hindered me, I wonder where, how far I could have gone, I always wonder, you know. So... Uh, then, because I started at Diné College, a job was waiting for me, tailor-made. I didn't have to compete for it. I didn't have to, you know, do anything. I didn't go for an interview. I stepped right into the position and stayed there until I retired in uh, 2007. I really liked my job, I would think, and say, Lots of people get up every day and say, I hate going to work, you know. Oh, I just hate my job. I never felt that. I really never felt that. I would get up and just get on the road and I'd stay Friday afternoon working on lessons and so forth, grading papers. I really liked my job. And when, we, uh, when I uh, retired, they asked me to do the commencement speech, the commencement speech. The president came and asked me, oh, no, I said, I don't talk to large groups of people. No, I don't want to do it. <laughs> Come on, Della. He said, just do it. 
And the, the writer I said that I worked with said, Della, just talk about what you learned here. What was good, what didn't really work, and so forth. What worked for you, and just talk about that. He said, talk about your experience. So I sat down and wrote out my speech. It was fantastic. I really enjoyed doing it. And students wiping away tears, not just students, but people in the audience. And later, back over here, people say, are you the lady that made us cry? You know? <laughs> so I like that. I like my job. I really enjoyed it. And uh, I missed it. I had to have a traditional ceremony to kind of draw me away from it. I had become too used to that kind of life because I retired. To come back to this life that I had neglected, the sheet, the land, the ceremonies, that was my main reasons, or those were my main reasons for retiring. And uh, one, that, <laughs> that fall, the lady we interviewed and chose to take my place decided, no, I don't want to do that. It's too much. So Miranda got me on the phone. She said, Irvin asked me to call you. Can you come back and help us one more semester? I jumped at it. I said, yeah, sure, I would. <laughs> I went back, taught that last semester. I taught in uh, freshman English one and then uh, some of the lower level uh, English classes and then introduction to Native American literature. And then it was really time to go after that. <laughs> Della's mother encouraged her education, saying it was her opportunity for a better life. And my mom always pushed me, go to school, I want you to go to school. As you know, she says, she used to say, uh, I didn't get any education, and so look, I have nothing to provide you. I can't, she said. And I, I want you to do that for yourself. I think your education is your ticket to that. I want you to one day be able to enjoy what some people are taking for granted, living in nice homes, driving beautiful vehicles, wearing clothing, you know, nice clothing. Our clothes came from the church, the hand, hand-me-downs, you know. Some missionaries from back east would send a box of clothes to the church, and we went there, and that's what we wore. Maybe the shoes didn't fit us, you know. And socks and un other underwear she bought with, for, for us from her, the what little weaving she did in the summer. She had ten of us, so, um, you know, between all that ch child rearing, she was able to bring us all up. And I'd like to say, we're all doing well. Much of Della's cultural education came from her home life and the ceremonies and traditions that surrounded her. I think just living with my mother, living in her home, herding sheep for her, her doing the Navajo puberty ceremony with me. There's a lot of education involved there. They talk to you about it and have taken part in traditional ceremonies. He listen to people talk, hearing what they have to say and taking it. That is, I think, I, I consider that education. And they talk about the far, the woman's duties in the home and so forth, water, the four elements of life and so forth. Yeah, I, I believe there was there. There was that formal education the whole time I was living with my mother and still continues today, still don't. Because I had uh, gone to Ganado Mission, I stepped out of that for a while because there, that is a missionary school, Presbyterian missionary. And at the big, at the entranceway was a big sign that read, Tradition. the enemy of progress. And I began to believe in that. Yeah, these things are just holding us back. They're no good. Why do we even do them? I started believing in that, but after I met my husband, this was a very traditional family. I uh, came back, and I have been back in, in the tradition now for a long time. Hey, yo, 
Della cared strongly about her students and the quality of her teaching at the Neck College. I know students always ask me, why are you teaching English when everybody hates English so much, you know? I just had such a love for language, and I thought the, the only literature was the Bible. That's what we, we read in high school as literature. When it came time to read literature, or for literature class, we read the Bible, we read from the Bible. And I thought that was all there was. And uh, it wasn't until later that I found out there were all these authors, all these classics that I could have been reading and enjoying. Why did I agree to go to the mission school, I used to, to wonder. But I'm sure it built some of my other character, you know, that I, the person that I am now. After I had been working a while, I also had the opportunity to go to uh, Chicago and study at the Newberry Library, where I discovered Native American stuff written by Native Americans as early as way back then, so that we couldn't handle books with the books with our hands. We'd have to go to a special room, put on gloves, and, and read like that. And those were by Native Americans, and or about Native Americans. So there's a whole new door that was open to me. And ever since then, I've only written, I've only read Native stuff. There's so much to still get through. Oh, when I could reach a student, even one, and they say, oh, is that what you meant? Or, wow, I didn't even think about that. Then I knew that I had reached that student. That made my day, that just completed my day. There were two groups of students that I uh, came through my classes. One group said, don't take Mrs. Totalina's class. You know, she's too mean. And uh, she'll make you hard, work hard. Heaven forbid we have to work now that we're in college, you know. We're here to have a good time. And so there was that group. They told one another, don't take her class. And then there was another group that said, take Mrs. Totalina's class by all means. You learn something. The, the Western concept, the Western stuff we learn, is so temporary. Those are the things that our kids want. They're going to be here today and gone tomorrow. But culture, the Navajo culture, is going to be here for a long time. And it will always be here. And you remember sometimes how the teachings that you've been given and you, how they try to foster you along through things like that, that it's, things are there and everything that you need to keep yourself afloat is always there and it's because of them. And so I always take that for granted. And so I never really stopped to think and, and say to my mother, you know, thank you for everything so much. It's just never something that I could imagine repaying or be able to. Benashni, 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 Benashni,